Welcome back to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. And in this segment of Breaking Truckers, we're going back to Unapologetically Pretty. Y'all remember the last episode of Breaking Truckers? Because it's redneck, it's racist, and we have good old boys from the Deep South. Yes, the TikTok trucking community has responded to this young man, Unapologetically Pretty. Yes, they have their own opinions on about what happened. Well, of course, in the last episode of Breaking Truckers, this young man talked about the comparisons of being in the truck versus being in jail and also made some very strong racism comments. These truck drivers in these stitches had came back to say what they have to say. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I had to turn my truck off of this one. It depends what company you go to, what carrier you go to. You get your own authority, get your own truck, and will drive for yourself. You don't have to drive for nobody. This is, this is the only industry I know that if you have money and you have good ass credit, you can get your own authority, get your own truck, and you call the shots. You don't have to drive for nobody. You choose to drive for somebody. You can, you can rent a truck. You can lease a truck, but each his own. Who child, three minute timer set for this one. Don't know if I'll use it, but here goes. Just like you can buy black, you can work black. And it sounds to me like you're saying you don't get anything because it's not owned and operated and ran by a black family or by black people. Everything you just asked, I can prove is a lie. This truck right here, that trailer right there, that piece of equipment right there and the cutting crew down there all owned by a black man and his wife you can work black just like you can buy black but it seems to me you forgot about something in trucking and as you start at the bottom and work your way up you can't walk into a company and get the nicest damn truck they got that ain't gonna happen you gotta go in there and earn your damn stripes you gotta go clean up that dirty truck you gotta go drive that older model truck you gotta do all of that and earn your way to something nicer i did not walk in here and get what you see. I worked my way up to this. Try that on for size. Or, just like you buy black, go work black. It works. I'm a good old boy from the deep south in a rural area. Isn't categorizing every type of person that you just named into a specific group and calling them racist Racist? I'm gonna tell you the same thing that all the people that were riding here a couple years ago were telling everybody else. Quit speaking for me. Because me and my children love everybody. We are all the same in God's eyes. I don't want you to quit trucking. I want more people to become truck drivers. But I want you personally to fuck all the way off. All right, so I'm going to see if I can articulate this maybe just a little bit better than some of the other stitches I've seen in this video. Now, as far as these trucks you're assigned when you get through orientation and stuff like that, in my experience, 16 years out here, the person that's assigning them, especially at your bigger companies, has never seen that truck. They're just going based off of what the registration says on their computer. They're matching a driver that's in orientation with, okay, I got this truck available, and it's here in the yard. So that falls on whoever was supposed to clean out the truck or their maintenance department or whatever. They're not doing that purposely just because of the color of your skin. Now on to the part about owning you. I said the exact same thing about a month ago. If you go back through my videos, it's probably about four or five behind this one. I'm wearing the same shirt as I am right now. I actually said the exact same thing. Unfortunately, a lot of the companies out here they get this idea in their head that because they own the truck, they own the driver. It's just simply not the case. I found this job looking for a job, I'll find another one. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. I have felt like that this into my entire 16 years behind the wheel. Not so much with the smaller companies, but with the bigger companies, that's more of a problem. Now, I'm not going to say that there's not racism out here. To say there's not racism out here is just naive. And anybody who thinks that has obviously never turned on a CB radio in their life. 
But with that being said, you can't blame everything on fucking racism. A lot of this is just the way the trucking industry is, and it's to everybody, regardless of their skin color. Now, with that being said, there are companies out there, like J.B. Hunt as an example, that will stick up for their drivers. The consensus in this video is that race is the biggest factor when it comes to people quitting in this industry. Well, let me tell you a little something about race. It was a white man that I watched for 20 years mentor whites, blacks, Navajos, Mexicans, ex-cons, atheists, Christians, all of them, and taught them how to be the best drivers that they could be. It was a white man who gave me the courage to get in a truck in the first place. It was a white man who drove me for eight weeks solid to trucking school to get my license. It was a white man who played a mall Santa during the holidays that got me through the bookwork to get my license. It was a white man who taught me how to shift the manual transmission in these big trucks. It was a white man, a Navajo man, and a Mexican man who gave me my first opportunity in the oil field. It was a Navajo woman who taught me how to drive an 18 speed. When I came out over the road, it was a black man who offered me his top bunk in his truck when my mentor left me high and dry in the middle of the night in Memphis, Tennessee. It was that same black man who found me another black man to finish up the 70 hours of training that I had left and we got it done in a week. It was the four black students out of 13 who trusted me to train them and help them to become more successful than myself right now. It's the black man who planned my truck for a month and that ended up being my highest earning month. When I was pregnant with my second one, it was the white man who made sure that I got home every month for every single doctor's appointment. It was the 60 year old white man who taught me how to slide my tandems using the glove trick. It was the 87-year-old man that I watched fall out on location because he didn't have his H2S monitor on, so I started wearing mine faithfully. It was the rig guys who made sure that we ate that day because while operations were down, they decided to grill. It's the ladies in the office who dress nice and inspire me to put on a face and look like a person from time to time. First off, I think calling the majority of the industry racist and then turning around and using racist slurs towards those people is pretty hypocritical, don't you think? talk about the trucking industry as basically the department of corrections and you're prisoned to your truck yeah i can see that happening because the truth is it doesn't matter what your career is what you make out of it is what you're going to get out of it and as long as you sit around playing the victim you'll get to be the victim and if you want to run around looking for the shitty side of everything you're bound to find it and when you're sitting back doing the woe is me, you guys treat me this bad, what you're really doing is letting them walk on you. And nobody is to blame for your weaknesses. So let me tell you how to change that. Step one, get rid of the I'm a victim mentality. Step two, stop expecting everybody to just hand you shit and start earning it. They gave you the equipment to use. It's your job to turn it into your comfort. If you want the better runs with the more miles and the higher pay, have a work ethic that deserves that. Because it looks to me like you're just talking the talk, but not walking the walk. And ask yourself what you have done. You, not the other drivers, you. What you have done to deserve better. What's your on-time record like? Have you paid your dues? You see those white trash redneck hillbillies you referred to? They're full of great advice. And I'm about to pass you down a piece of advice from those white trash redneck hillbillies. Listen close and take this to heart. Sometimes you gotta make chicken salad out of chicken shit. Let that sink in for a minute. You see, the world owes you nothing, nothing at all. And when you decide to quit playing the victim, pull your head out, you realize it's not so dark outside after all. That's my two cents on that whole video. I don't even have words for this. And all they want to do is complain about how bad trucking is. Yet, they drive a truck. You don't like the company you're with? Find a different company. You want a company that's run by all black people or all Mexican people or all Asian people? Well, find it. Better yet, start your own company. Oh, and don't give me no crap. Oh, they're holding me down because of this. Dude, it's trucking. Deal with it. Say that there isn't racial issues in the world would be completely naive and stupid, okay? So I would never say that. But to sit here and say all the issues that you presented only affect people of minorities, 
you're sadly, sadly mistaken. And who in the blue fuck are you working for? These redneck racist big fleet owners. I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, listen, fleet owners, big companies, whatever, like you're driving for CFI, these people don't care about you. But you think they would care any more about the white dude in that truck? No, it's how much shit that they can get us to do for them to make them money. And you kind of a millennial mindset. Doesn't have anything to do about with race. Yes, this industry was initially settled by white people, I guess, because that's truckers were, were from the country. And that's who lived in the country mostly, right? I mean, I've got black neighbors in, 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 the, in the woods, and they're great. They're good people, all of them. But it was still mostly farmers that, that, that started trucking. And yeah, we have a lot of other nationalities involved in trucking now, too. And as an employer, I've hired many people. There are stereotypes that go along with some people of all colors and backgrounds. And there is usually some truth behind all of those stereotypes. Even the ones this person is saying, there are some stereotypes there that could fit. But this person is definitely not right in anything they're saying, other than those small specific stereotypes. I find it sad in this day and age that anyone would spout this kind of rhetoric. It's like... Is that like a, a Jim Crow reverse narrative or something? It kind of is, isn't it? That's what we have to live with today. I really think that this country was less divided 20 years ago than it is now. And I find that to be very sad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The TikTok trucker community has Spoken, yes, uh, truck drivers, drivers all over the world, even transgendered. Let me know what you think about that uh, unapologetically pretty video, all right? Let me know how you feel. Drivers, if you was incarcerated, all right, can you really compare trucking to your incarceration? Other than the fact that you are in the truck by yourself for for uh 24 hours a day i guess because you get eight i mean you get 11 hours of driving you're on the clock for 14 hours but after you get off duty you're you're able to get out walk around take a shower talk to federal drivers watch tv do whatever you want to do but let me ask you this though it, it, is there is there is is trucking like being incarcerated? And that question is to my uh, uh, former truck drivers that was in prison. I would like to hear from them. That's going to do it for this segment of Breaking Truckers on the Lockout Man Podcast. Show.